Hello everyone. The war between Russia and Ukraine is becoming increasingly complex. Just the issue of Russia attacking Ukraine, Ukraine asking for Western weapons, then the West imposing sanctions on Russia, and then Russia retaliating with an energy war is already very confusing. But recently, we heard about another issue. The mercenary army that Russia brought into Ukraine is now turning back to overthrow the Russian army. So, what is happening? Is this a tactic to distract Ukraine from Russia or not? Let's find out in this video. Wagner is a group of mercenaries paid with money or freedom for each soldier. Why freedom? Because Russia has allowed Wagner to recruit members from its own prisoners. The leader of Wagner once told the prisoners that if they fought bravely, they would be free. Although it sounds like the Wagner organization is clumsy with all these prisoners, meaning that few people are trained in combat, there is no uniformity in professional level and even ideology. An organization where each person has a different origin and commits a different crime. It seemed that such a group would hardly be able to do anything, but in reality, the results showed that this clumsy mercenary team was very good at fighting. They fought very effectively and at times played an important role as a vanguard for Russia to attack Ukraine and achieved unexpected results. The strong and effective fighting ability of Wagner is explained by many people as they fight with the spirit of having nothing to lose. But when Russia let Wagner go to war, whether they were acting or real, for many months here the leader of Wagner constantly criticized the Russian Ministry of Defense. Mr. Prigozhin, the boss of Wagner, said that Russian soldiers fought ineffectively, many times leaving important positions for Wagner's army to fight alone against the enemy. Not only that, Wagner also criticized Russian army generals many times for not providing weapons and armored vehicles causing Wagner to fail in many important battles. Wagner believes that Russian generals are afraid of being robbed of their achievements by Wagner. While Western analysts believe that the army did not provide weapons to Wagner because they wanted to save them to fight against Ukrainian attacks in the future, many believe that Russia is applying the tactic of pretending soldiers, meaning that Wagner only acts like this to distract Ukraine's thinking while in fact there is no internal conflict on the Russian side. However, this issue is increasingly not as predicted when Mr. Prigozhin constantly posted videos heavily criticizing the leaders of the Russian Ministry of Defense. And even went further in one video he said that the war in Ukraine was not to bring Russians back into our arms nor to demilitarize or defascist Ukraine. Mr. Prigozhin believes that this war is unnecessary. He said that thousands of soldiers had sacrificed themselves to serve the purposes of some people. Specifically, he said, War is necessary so that a herd of animals can simply glorify in joy. So it's not just criticism, but Mr. Prigozhin is also cursing Russian leaders except Mr. Putin. Why except Mr. Putin? Because Prigozhin said that Mr. Putin was being deceived by his subordinates who provided false information causing him to make inappropriate decisions. Until this point, many people began to doubt whether the tactic of pretending soldiers was real or not. Is it possible to act so deeply as to curse even the purpose of war and curse all Russian leaders? And the peak of tension was these days when Wagner's boss appeared on video with a very angry attitude saying that about 2,000 soldiers had died, but not because of Ukraine. Prigozhin believed that it was the Russian army behind this missile attack, even thinking that the Russian Minister of Defense had flown there to direct this attack. So, Wagner immediately withdrew his troops and vowed to punish the Russian Ministry of Defense. Currently, Prigozhin wants Russian defense leaders to come sit at the negotiation table. While negotiating with what conditions, Prigozhin has not specifically said, but it can be guessed that his request will make Russian military leaders unhappy. After withdrawing troops to Rostov province, Wagner made two statements. One, they do not want to clash with Russian soldiers, however, if anyone blocks their way, they will be tough without compromise. The evidence is that Wagner has informed that a Russian helicopter attacked them, and they shot down this plane. However, there is no video about shooting down planes yet. Another statement is that Wagner's boss said he was standing in the center of command for operations in Ukraine by the Russian army, showing he had occupied and controlled this command center. But public opinion also questioned whether these statements were true or not. This information is difficult to verify because Russia has not commented yet. Talking a bit about Rostov, this is the largest city in southern Russia and the capital of Rostov region, bordering part of eastern Ukraine where fierce fighting is taking place. This city is also home to the headquarters of the southern military district of Russia. Previously, 
There was the 58th Joint Armed Corps fighting against Kyiv's counterattack in southern Ukraine. Rostov is also home to the command center for all Russian joint forces in Ukraine. Although declaring control of military sites in Rostov, Prigozhin said his activities would not hinder Russia's special military operations. He said Wagner fighters were controlling an airport, but planes participating in the Ukrainian campaign still left normally. He said, we controlled the airport so that planes would not attack us but attack towards Ukraine. Before Wagner's alleged treasonous actions, the Russian army called on Wagner to restrain and obey Mr. Putin. At the same time, they also called on Wagner's soldiers to leave their boss. Mr. Putin said that Wagner's actions were anti-national, betraying the Russian people, and Wagner's boss was prosecuted for inciting mutiny. So, is this a tactic of pretending soldiers by the Russian side to make Ukraine lose focus or not? Or if it is true, how will Russia overcome this serious Wagner problem? Let's wait for the next part. Thank you for watching the video. Goodbye and see you again.